Hello everyone. We welcome you on our platform What After Dentistry. I'm Dr. Shireen and as you know, we are a team of dentists and healthcare professionals and we aim to provide guidance, career options related to dentistry and healthcare clinical and non-clinical career fields to various dental graduates, students and interns. Today, we have with us Dr. Sandhya Tamgade who is an oral pathologist and a professor currently working in D.Y. Patel University School of Dentistry in Mumbai. And she has been working here since 1998 when she completed her MDS in oral pathology and histology from GDC Nagpur. She's the only oral pathologist who has learned 3D animation videos and she has created histopathological aspects of various diseases like lichen planus, oral submucous fibrosis, epithelial dysplasia, tooth development, etc. She has designed all these 3D videos by herself and published in various national and international journals. She also has her YouTube channel wherein she teaches tooth carving to dental students, graduates and interns who would like to do more on the carvings, but it's mainly for the dental students. She has received many awards for developing innovative teaching methods. She's also known for her tremendous research work in the field of oral histopathology. And currently one of her research recently was published in a DCI webinar. Apart from this, she also has a keen interest in learning sign language to educate the disabled patients and is continuously working to increase patient awareness and education related to oral health and hygiene. We welcome you, ma'am, and it's a pleasure to have you today on our platform here, talking about scope and opportunities in the field of oral pathology and histology, histopathology. So th thank you so much for coming on our platform today. Thank you so much, Shireen. First of all, a very good morning to you, and thank you so much. I would like to thank you and Dr. Vipin for giving me opportunity to share my journey as an oral pathologist, as a dentist, as a mentor and healthcare provider. Thank you so much uh, on your, it's a pleasure to be a part of your YouTube channel, What After Dentistry. So it's a good platform to share um, our journey and guide uh, whatever little we have done to our students. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. So starting off uh, with, you know, before we just get into the entire discussion on oral pathology and histopathology, we would like to know your journey. How has it been like 20 years after completing MDS? What were your struggles and achievements at that moment of time? Because we generally feel the older generation, there was no struggle at all. But I'm sure there must be some. So we would like to know about your journey now. Yeah. As you rightly said, earlier there was no competition, right? So there was not uh, much struggle, but still, I will. I would like to share my journey. So in 1998, mm -hmm. I passed my um, BDS uh, in uh, MDS from GDC Nagpur. And from there, <clears throat> uh, it was two year MDS course. So when I was in first year MDS, I got married, but I stayed there, continued my, finished my MDS, and then I shifted to Mumbai because my in-laws were here. So after coming here, uh, six months I was at home and I was trying uh, various colleges for job as a lecturer. And then um, I came to know that there is a vacancy in DY Park in Mumbai. My husband was a lecturer there in the same department. So I came to know about the vacancy. I went there, uh, submitted application. I got the job and uh, since then I'm here only, till date. So then as far as the uh, journey of faculty is concerned, it was very easy, like uh, digital platform was not there that time. There was no digital, only Blackboard teaching. So I still remember I used to teach on a Blackboard and uh, one OHP projector was there. If younger generation knows that that time there was OHP projector and uh, we used to write on OHP sheets and it was displayed and then, but more than OHP uh, projector, uh, we used to use Blackboard teaching and it still remember there was no mic, the lecture hall was, was big, but still I used to dictate my notes. Uh, entire lecture was a dictation and then uh, on blackboard I used to go previous day 
and I used to draw all the diagrams and all the important points I used to write down. The blackboard size was very big. Half I used to use and I used to tell the pupils that ये दो तीन दिन रखो मुझे लगेगा and the the other half I used to preserve for the other subject faculty. So then for three four days that topic diagrams and it used to be there on the blackboard. And then uh, the student used to sincerely write down each and every word what I used to dictate. And uh, now also student, uh, whenever I meet them, they used, they tell me like, Madam, I we have still preserved your notes. And few of the students they have even cited my notes in their dissertations. So that is a uh, uh, like I feel uh, really nice when they tell me. So it was all handwritten and everything. Then slowly, slowly. uh digital media started like in, we received one computer in our department and uh, we, uh, internet was still not there so we received computer lcd and laptop and slowly slowly google thing came and then mobile came little later mobile was also not there then i started learning microsoft word and powerpoint and then i used to start uh, uh, then i started learning powerpoint and being a creative person i used to try all uh, tools of powerpoint to beautify my presentation so this is how from blackboard teaching little bit i started with uh, this uh, digital uh, lectures and then uh, this is how our blackboard teaching converted to digital teaching and then uh, this is regarding lectures then as far as practical part is concerned uh, like in uh, as an oral pathologist we teach uh, Uh, carving in first year histology in first year and then oral pathology in third year so then uh, during demonstration of carving no like uh, whatever student they submit their carvings i used to collect so batch of 100 uh, so many teeth so there was a big carton i used to collect all those carvings and after teaching we used to have uh, like uh, free time free time so i used to spend those that free time doing something else so what i used to do i collect those i used to melt those <clears throat> small small block blocks i used to make big blocks and i used to carve big big teeth on those i still preserve those in my museum so i have all big big tooth models i use those um, carving models for demonstration and then why when i used to give uh, carving demonstrations students used to tell me madam your carvings are very nice it is not given this method is not given anywhere can we click video i used to say see if you click and then if you share uh, the quality may not be good let me try like i will shoot one proper video and i will share with you so then i this is how i started my uh, youtube channel uh, i started uh, the shooting uh, all those videos i requested someone like can you shoot a video i will do the carving so i used to speak and do the carving and the person in front of me he used to uh, that was recently started some years back and then i thought of where to upload how to upload then in my phone i saw there is one upload option in youtube in my account so i uploaded then there and then i shared it was highly appreciated then i got a request that we should start um, many videos uploading so slowly slowly all videos and i didn't know that once you upload it becomes your channel <laughs> so this is how uh, my youtube channel also started and then um, um uh i whenever i teach no i more i focus more on concept based i always tell my students stop this rote learning oral pathology rote learning will not help for everything you should know why for every point then only it is interesting so concept i focus more on concept based learning and then um, through that concept based learning uh, i have developed one new steam in my department like how it started like uh, in 1949 uh, one researcher no he had uh, published one article in which one histopathological stain if you put on a section which has multiple heart tissues that stain no it gives different color to heart tissues different color to enamel dentin and cement and then it was a black and white article he said if this research is continued in future that was on a tooth section so he said you somebody should try it in odonto you know odonto is a mixture random mixture of all, of all heart tissue so then my pg came and said madam this is on uh, normal tissue normal tooth so if possible we can continue this and the researchers have concluded that it should be done in some odontogenic tumor 
so i thought let us try and then uh, concept based learning started from uh, we applied there also and then when we stained the odontom tissues and various odontogenic tumors our slide was colorful and the, that research we taken ahead and that black and white article and his conclusion uh, we continued ahead and then the slide was so colorful and we published in international journal and based on that in many university that uh, stain has been, uh, like they have taken this stain as a post graduate research and then we also have done two three research and sometimes you know when i am attending any scientific conference national a conference and suddenly i'm listening to that stain and suddenly my name pop up like credit to my research so it feels very nice so this concept based learning is also very important so then i am also uh, interested in patient education so student education is one part but uh, a uh, patient education is also very important especially those are unprivileged so then i thought uh, our message should reach to them also they can't hear they can't speak they can't uh, visualize so then i thought i came to know about indian sign language so then i thought first i should learn then only i will convince my healthcare sector so then uh, in this lockdown i attended uh, one session one month course finished uh, basic indian sign language for deaf and dumb and now i want to do something uh, patient awareness program for this in indian sign language so i'm taking help of uh, sign language experts and interpreters and soon i am planning to conduct one in webinar so this is all my journey uh, in my oral pathology specialty <laughs> this is great ma'am this is so inspiring and so motivating because you know oral path is one subject that i was i literally used to just mug up everything for and that also just sit before the exam and i'm sure many students are like me only also it it yes. was always a fear like oral path oh my god ye padhna padega itna yaad karna padega so but then what you have done in so many years this is so inspiring and so motivating and i'm really very very well it's it's an honor for us to have you on our platform today so ma'am uh, like uh, so uh, all the you know like when we started doing the tooth carvings i always had this question in my mind why am i doing this carving i mean i i don't have to build a tooth it will naturally develop in someone's mouth so why do yes. why do you think that carving is important and what is the significance of carving for dental students and uh, even ahead in the journey how does it help yeah so this uh, many students they ask me why this uh, carving is very very important so basically <clears throat> uh through carving you know we learn um, the morphology of the tooth okay and ultimately you are going into private practice okay so some treatment procedures are you have to give it to a lab person he will do but some fillings you have to do it on chair right aesthetic dentistry fillings and then um, for interpretation radiographic inter interpretation you have many patients in your clinic many x rays right so that if you have a knowledge of a teeth or the root shape of the canal the root of the canal the crown morphology everything you should know a tooth numbering system tooth notations everything so morphological details especially when you are doing uh, filling on chair like then it should be a exact replica what patient had okay if your filling is not according to the required parameter suppose anterior set of teeth you will do filling but if it is not matching with the opposite side patient will not accept it right and then you may convince like acha dikhta hai sab acha hai but next time patient will not come to you and he will tell 10 more people don't go to this dentist i am not happy okay similarly in posterior part even if you do do some filling and pack the material but occlusion may not be proper because the, you have not restored the exact groove cusp and fossa morphology okay so that is there and aesthetic dentistry final details are required so many people are into aesthetic dentistry and there like most of the thing you only have to perform like you should have those hand skills so it will come through carving smoothly okay and this is like clinical dentistry but where well, as a forensic expert teeth identification is so important like for age determination gender determination the 
anatomy of teeth and morphology of teeth is very very important so as a forensic expert also you should have a detailed knowledge of it so everywhere not only in uh, aesthetic in every branch of dentistry the morphology of teeth is very very important okay so that's the importance of learning tooth carving no not only crown but root also right. is very very important as far as your private practice and forensic sciences goes right so all you dental students out there if you are fearing from uh, tooth carvings you can always refer back to you know ma'am's uh, youtube channel i will put it down in the description look how she how detailed you know carvings she basically teaches to her students so please uh, if you ha still have a fear take that fear out because this understanding the tooth morphology the crown and the root part is very very important in your career ahead so uh, ma'am next um, uh what do you think i mean like how has teaching changed you know in the oral pathology or overall in the uh, dental you know uh, industry from the last 20 years because as you said earlier uh, in your introduction that yes we i also remember our lectures also were through that o ohp sheets so but then now since you have done so much in the digital you know education sector that you are using digital tools so could you please explain how this teaching experience is uh, changing and uh, what are the measures that one can take to further change this industry yeah so before i start my um, experience uh, from blackboard teaching to the digital platform i would like to acknowledge you both of you because you are into uh, healthcare informatics so it is basically you are working for this sector only and uh, you know dental education has evolved in covid times everything was digital and so many things now are required as far as digital education is concerned in dentistry and you and your team can contribute uh, a lot so many things uh, have to be like uh, we should work and contribute in the Uh, uh dentistry so like people like you and your team should come forward and uh, as a part of team you should contribute so i really acknowledge i was not knowing like this sector is also existing so when i came to know recently about your work and your interest so i thought yeah these are the people who will contribute and take the dentistry on it <laughs> so i really acknowledge you and your work so now <clears throat> and so you are regarding your question how the uh, uh, dent uh, this oral pathology has evolved okay so as you know like uh, it was blackboard teaching ohp sheet and then just slowly slowly powerpoint presentation um, uh, uh, we started uh, working on powerpoint presentation and then a few more thing i would like to share like in covid time no suddenly lockdown and and students went home and all their stuff like carving material everything was here and they uh, moved to their hometown and then but the uh, dental education was continued through online teaching and then there are two parts theory and practical so theory we also learn first time we learn what is zoom and google meet and everything so theory part uh, we learned and then everything was managed like uh, re recorded lecture live lecture but uh, carving was difficult yeah and then it was a initial phase of covid time so then uh, there was a instruction you should finish all your carving also till canine it was done all pre molars molars were pending how to give online demo and then uh, social distancing was very strict like you should not mingle with people so then for giving a demonstration i need assistance no somebody to handle zoom somebody uh, to focus camera and then that was not allowed so how to do it so then one day i was sitting on a staff table i was first year in charge uh, that bad how to do it and then i was thinking then i was sitting on a staff table and you know like in hospitals no some uh, that wooden chairs are there and the back seat has there those holes if you remember like a part of a design the seat not back seat the seat has those holes as a part of design so then what i did and i saw my mobile camera i saw my mobile camera and uh, that camera has this hole right so 
so then um, then i kept that chair on my staff table and i stuck this mobile i aligned this pole with that this size is exactly same i put a cello tape here and i stuck this camera on a back seat understood mm -hmm. and then i was standing next to the table okay my chair was on my table this camera on my chair and then i was working under the chair mm -hmm. and whatever i was doing i was looking from top on my camera and this is how i finished molar cave right maxillary molar first cave everything i was doing one man show zoom was started camera focus i was uh, moving my hands up and down to get correct focus recording option was also there i was talking i was managing zoom focus and single handed nobody was around okay i was alone in my lecture hall <laughs> empty students are uh, at home and then this is how i managed my zoom session practically single handed okay and that is there on my facebook then after my uploaded then students said madam we don't have carver and blocks at home ah how to do for that also i came up with a solution so what i did i said you don't have uh, carving and uh, carver and wax block at home for that also i will find a solution so i was sitting in the in the evening at home then i you know, thought uh, i had one big candle so i uh, at home birthday candle so i melted that uh, poured it in one small colgate small colgate paste carton made a small block reduced it to a required size of our standard wax block size took a kitchen knife and with the blunt end i gave a demonstration i did one good molar carving on that also and recorded a video and this recorded video i posted on facebook so that was also highly appreciated so this is how we have to evolve and we have to find out solution we should not stop okay so this covid time has taught, taught us like every problem has a solution so this is how uh, the teaching during covid time has evolved and now regarding microscopes when we were student it was very simple microscope focusing was little bit tough right and we had single eyepieces but now after that we had by we have a binocular microscope in our department every institute has so from monocular to binocular now we have a, a computer attached to the microscope so whatever we are visualizing in the microscope it is seen on the screen then you have image editor and software you can do many things with those images and you can uh, um, email those images and you can have a live discussion you can live display your screen in the lecture hall like that these kind of microscope are there in the department also you have pentahed microscope like one person is sitting in the center unit is so big like five people can visualize same focus at the same time and you can have a good discussion so that is called as pentahed microscope five people can visualize so we use that microscope for uh, diagnosis of slime so whenever we receive cases five six people they sit together so same field can be viewed amongst other and this is how we have a good discussion and we reach a final diagnosis and give us give a report so this is how microscopes have also been evolved then many other types of microscopes are there research microscope so many attachments are there so for students also i use it so it is very good like instead of uh, teaching notes the slide explanation happen on those computer screen so this is how it has been evolved oral pathology specifically i think this is great this is amazing to hear because these things were not there and when we were doing our dentistry and uh, to yes. see how much change in the teaching you know methodology has happened all credit yes. goes to you ma'am because i don't know how many colleges are still uh, they are, are they adapting to this kind of teaching method or not but because we are seeing it happening in dwa patel i'm sure it will happen in the other colleges as well so thank you so much for you know uh, coming up with such innovative teaching methodology for students and especially for yeah. this uh, for this subject it is highly highly appreciated yes and uh, one more thing like earlier we had only three standard textbooks right for first pds orbin and wheelers right 
histology uh, for uh, uh, urban for histology and wheelers for morphology and for oral pathology we used to read schaefer till now these are all bible books yes okay these are standard textbooks but now as the teaching uh, the dental education has been evolved we have so many books now and we have online uh, platform also like whatever we don't understand you just google search and you have it okay and uh, these uh, textbooks extra textbook you are readily available so you have soft copies available with you so if you want to refer extra uh, information if you want extra information everything is there right at the fingertip so this is how the dental education has been evolved. So, uh, next, ma'am, please guide our audience in terms of what is the career path, or what are are there multiple career paths in this uh, field of oral pathology and histopathology? Because whenever we do any kind of a non-clinical, you know, or we choose a non-clinical path, MDS in say or M oral path or MDS in community dentistry, we generally feel that the career path is, uh, you know, it gets stuck as an academician. But do you think that apart from that also there are various other paths that one can explore and get into? Yes. So as soon as uh, you finish your MDS in oral pathology, you have to work on your resume or CV. Okay. So it is not like just your research work and your uh, oral pathology career. Do something extra also and make a good CV. Okay. And then after that, um, every postgraduate will try for a job as a lecturer, okay? So then you uh, keep a track, like wherever vacancy is there. So you keep inquiring through social media, through your contacts, in government setup, in private sector. Okay, so this is a part of your uh, teaching uh, opportunity. Then, uh, as far as your practice is concerned, many of my friends know, they are consultant histopathologists. Okay, so like you have to tell your contacts that I am into, uh, uh, like I can give a diagnosis. I'm a consultant oral pathologist. So if you have any difficult cases and if you need a diagnosis, so then um, I can help you. Okay, so many of my uh, friends, uh, in addition to general dentistry, so they have their own clinic, they do everything, but they have a microscope in their clinic also. So then you can do this also. And few uh, friends, they are doing exclusively oral pathology. My teacher, my professor from GDC Nagpur, who retired as a principal of that college, he's still now, he is doing uh, exclusive oral pathology. Okay, and he is like good experience, like he's an international person. Like he's known for his research, his survey, his follow-up studies. And he is doing exclusively oral pathology. Also, like a um, few experience, um, few things I would like to share. Like one of my friend, he was telling me the other day, like uh, one patient came to the clinic and then a uh, patient was having pain in the throat. Okay. And then uh, he had visited many doctors and many investigations, but still there was no relief. And then... Um, oral pathologist while talking to him he experienced that at regular intervals he's experiencing pain which he was also not aware the patient was not aware he was talking but at regular intervals while talking he was stopping and experiencing pain so then uh, uh, oral pathologist thought that regular pain is a sign of some neurologic pain so he referred that patient to neurologist his friend was neurologist. And then uh, the diagnosis was correct. It was uh, neuralgia. Okay. And uh, one more patient, he said, like, a um, uh, patient came to his clinic and then uh, some nasal discharge was there. And then um, somebody told that some, some sinusitis, something is there. But he observed that the the, the uh, type of secretion which was coming out, it was not a nasal discharge. It was something else. The color was different. The consistency was different. And then something he felt, uh, and again, he referred to neurologist. And then it was some um, related to some nervous system coming through nose. So then if you are uh, into a, like we oral pathologists know, we usually work on etiopathogenesis. Like in teaching also, 
in instead of more on sim, uh, treatment modality and treatment part we oral pathology the cause of the disease we usually focus more so through that cause it will really help in private practice also so these are the experiences and one my personal experience i want to tell you recently last week no <clears throat> three patient uh, of lichen planus i want to share uh, the uh, how we focus more on uh, cause so one patient uh, lady patient came to our department and uh, the provisional diagnosis was lichen planus you know like on buccal uh, mucosa you get white striations so then while taking case history Uh, i was asking her do you have any skin lesions like usually they have on extremities so she said no then i asked are you on medication no uh, do you have any deficiencies any hormonal disturbance no so then i asked uh, do you have any emotional stress she said no if you ask straight way patient will say nahi sab to theek hai thoda bahut rehta hai then i asked her do you have any uh, mental stress which is continuously in your mind aisa koi takleef hai jo baar baar dimag mein chalte rehta hai indirectly i asked then she said yes uh, since few months uh, there is some family issues like uh, in the joint family some issues are there and then she broke down she could not stop her tears so this is what like you have to work on cause and we know like in planus the major cause is emotional stress similarly one male patient came usually we know that this autoimmune skin lesions are seen in more commonly in females but that male patient was there with a lichen planus from omr patient uh, was referred and then i uh, then i thought it is usually seen in uh, female patients so while asking he said no sab kuch normal hai then I, then similarly i asked aisa kuch hai kuch aapko kuch chinta sata rahi hai so kuch hua hai then that male patient could not stop his tears he could not talk only he said ha business mein mere doston ne bahut mujhe dhoka diya pura mera business hi flop ho gaya hai and he could not speak so i said this is very important aap ro lo ye bahut important hai andar jo bhara hai shayad being a male person you can't share but this is very important as a doctor uh, i will first listen to you आपको जितना बोलना है आपने शायद किसी को बोला नहीं होगा फैमिली को भी कैसे बोलेंगे राइट इन सो आप मुझे बोल दो सो फॉर हाफ एन आवर आई जस्ट केप क्वाइट आई लिसन टू हिम सो देन वी हैव अ फीडबैक सो बिफोर लीविंग नो आई यूजुअली टेल माय पेशेंट आप फीडबैक लिख दीजिए सो देन दैट फीडबैक वॉज ही रोट इन हिंदी ऐसे डॉक्टर कभी मिले नहीं कि जो हमारी पूरी बात सुन ले हमारी जो तकलीफ है वो सुन ले ट्रीटमेंट तो होता ही है बट ऐसे भी डॉक्टर चाहिए सो दैट वाज अ ग्रेट अचीवमेंट फॉर सो एज अ डॉक्टर यू शुड बी अ गुड लिसनर गुड लिसनर डजेंट मीन दैट ओनली वर्ड्स यू शुड लिसन अनस्पोकन वर्ड एंड फीलिंग्स आल्सो यू शुड लिसन सो दैट इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एज अ पार्ट ऑफ डेंटिस्ट एंड लैंग्वेजेस लाइक इन मुंबई आई एम फ्रॉम मुंबई एंड इन मुंबई नो लाइक इंग्लिश इज अ प्रायोरिटी but through my experience i have learned like hindi and one local language is also very important when you are dealing with patient to get the confidence and to extract everything hindi is very important so this language and communication and be a good listener not only to the words but unspoken words and emotions you should be a good listener to that also this is what i want to say I think that's great. So amazing. So just to compile everything, there are so many career options. Not just as a in teaching, but then you can work as a oral pathologist. You can also work as a consultant histopathologist. You can work into research area, and then of course you can yes. always practice dentistry as a general yeah. you know practice that you have been doing. So yes, there are various avenues, and of course I, I think into forensic also you can go after doing this. Yes. Yes. So two more things I want to explain like uh, uh, in forensic also you can uh, uh, you can apply. Okay, so there also you need a researcher, and one more thing like uh, many universities know they get research grants. they get research grants and this research no it continues for many years and they need a team principal investigators and then you have observer then you have researcher roles 
and then uh, the criteria eligibility criteria are mentioned in those uh, ads like you need mds researcher so there also you can join as a researcher and they pay you okay so you can um, explore your uh, talent as a researcher also okay so that's what i want to say like you have multiple career option and don't just say tidal do many things you can explore many things for your speciality yes. and you can connect to oral practice right exactly as ma'am correctly said you should explore various things and i think you should get motivated by how she has learned and adapted 3d animation and then use this for all our pathology this can be also one area where if you want you can explore it for yourself and then sign language is what she is learning and she is continuing to learn on that so yes you can develop your own field in an interest area and then implement it in your area of uh, in your field of you know work i would like to know that uh, the very first thing as you said that once we complete or anyone who completes mbs they always look out for teaching opportunities in government or private colleges so uh, are there uh, we just want to know are there any portals or what is the process of you know getting this teaching opportunity or how do they get to know that there is a teaching vacancy in this particular college yes so after you after a person finishes uh, the mbs oral pathology so as far as teaching is concerned there are two portals government sector and private so for government you have to check for all ads like you have to enter through those ads only and for private colleges you have to keep a track through your contacts and through management so if there are any vacancies then you can join so it is basically depends on vacancy okay and ads so ma'am uh, today you might have seen that many students after bds they are opting for non clinical career options like hospital management public health health informatics uh, then there are they are they are also going into clinical research so how do you think that if these students after pursuing this you know masters in various non clinical career fields and they want to come back to dental industry do you think that these interdisciplinary uh, fields will help to grow and expand the dental industry yes of course like we need to widen our scope like seen many students know they are um, opting for uh, um, allied subjects or different sectors and then they are um, uh, collaborating with the dental industries okay so similarly i would um, uh, suggest uh, to all bds graduates like how for example i want to give example of my alumni Uh, like uh, one of my alumni he was very much interested in photography and then uh, after bds he created his uh, own uh, 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 photography school and he is only into dental photography he is a well known uh, person in dental photography dr mayur dawda you must be knowing and uh, so this is how like there was no curriculum there was no uh, speciality but uh, he has read he has done few courses and then uh, I, i i feel like uh, some optional subjects should also be included in curriculum so that if student is taking admission in bds he can choose that one or two selected uh, optional subject and then this is how the admissions will also increase and student will also feel interesting to do study some extra optional subjects like how we have it in school and junior college no apart in addition to uh, compulsory subjects we have optional subjects so similarly one of our alumni she was very much interested in pets and animals okay so she is into horse dentistry there is a field it is called as equine dentistry so after bds uh, she tried clinics and everything but she was not so much happy so then she went to abroad she did some certificate course and then now she is a busiest person in india she is the only equine uh, dental technician from india and she is consultant all over india and sri lanka and she has uh, uh, she is uh, working with various ngo also okay so similarly similarly like if we create uh, think of some courses our student might come up with something more and they will contribute tremendously in the field of dentistry like that day i was thinking like uh, um, if we have uh, uh, courses uh, for uh, uh, 
लाइक समथिंग आई रेड मोबाइल डेंटिस्ट्री लाइक इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्टिंग हाई टेक क्लिनिक एंड सिटिंग देयर व्हाई कैन वी फॉर्म अ टीम एंड वी गो प्लेसेस टू प्लेसेस लाइक हाउ दिस वर्ल्ड डेंटल कॉन्फ्रेंस व्हेन इट हैपेंस इट like there is proper setup there for 3 4 days with ac and everything all the trade fair happened in that uh, platform so similarly if as a team like students uh, the post uh, the media students they can form a team like all specialties like 8 9 people together and they as per need they can go places to places and they can offer their dental services there based on the population requirement so mobile dentistry or we can name it as dentistry on wheels okay then similarly on ships on ships what if emergency arises there also like a team of dentist can so some curriculum should be formatted or some uh, uh, customized curriculum should be formed and then dentist on ships okay like emergency one or two dentists are there but then what if we give full fledged dental services on ships also okay then there is one uh, uh, specialty sports dentistry it is uh, like highly popular abroad but in india i think there is a need to explore more in sports dentistry okay so through that we can prevent injuries we can treat injuries then something is aeronautical dentistry literature is there aeronautical dentistry but uh, working dentistry in space is totally different because gravity issues you can just can't eat. so uh, that day i was reading the toothpaste is swallowable toothpaste you can't spit right so then if students they can come up with this also and then one thing i very much interesting i want to tell you like one of our alumni he has done his uh, mds dissertation not total pathology some other branch in dental hypnosis can you imagine and he has even given demonstration of hypnosis so his patients like without la his mds patients were through hypnosis he can hypnotize and without la he can manage and he can recover also so uh, i requested like uh, i want to see so he demonstrated on undergraduate student and uh, while talking on the dental chair patient went into trance and then he recorded her also so this is how like students are every student is extraordinary i feel we should not feel that the 12th the percentage was good so this student is extraordinary students who are below average they have every student has extraordinary talent so if we give uh, uh, like many students can come up come up with many specialties okay so this is how we can widen our scope so there are many things uh, we can think of and why we can widen the scope of every specialty especially for bds also like for bds they can do many things for yes. dentistry right it, it, absolutely i mean like uh, absolutely you put it very correctly like everything that you learn it is not wasted you can apply this in your own you know area of interest and then create something good for yourself and then of course this will help to widen the scope of dentistry so thank you so much for ma'am uh, for elaborating it so nicely so uh, the last question of the of our session today uh, uh, and i would like to know that what is that one last tip or advice that you would like to give to our students who are either they are thinking to pursue dental uh, dentistry or they are into you know this field of education dental education they are doing it right now and then they want to explore careers after dentistry so what is that yes. one aspect that they should follow yes so one thing i want to suggest is like uh, they should study using concept based learning they should stop rote learning so when they are studying any subject concept based learning is very important they should know why for everything they should ask yourself themselves that why for everything so then only it becomes interesting and secondly whenever they are doing when they are studying dentistry they should do at least one research under the guidance of any faculty so that their cv like they will get a experience how a research is done and they should publish also so many ug studies um, many students you i have guided many ug student they have published also and uh, it has been cited also like before they get their degree they have publication in their hand with few citations and uh, patients students should have good patience and communication skills like don't focus only on english i feel in school it is compulsory 
but after you are graduate you should have a good command on national language also okay and uh, cv start working on your cv through various presentations and research participate in scientific uh, conferences and uh, that will add up in your cv and also request your faculty that you want to take at least one ug lecture so when you are in internship they should uh, expose to teaching also so that uh, teaching should be there and uh, uh, i would suggest at, in bds also sh students should th uh, start thinking like what new can be added in dentistry so uh, students bds students are extraordinary ha huh? so every student is extraordinary so every student should think what new i can add to the dentistry so this is my message oh thank you so much ma'am this is so i mean like you know we have never got these kind of information or these pointers that one two three four this is something that you should work and i think this is doable for every student so all you students out there please uh, you know uh, start working on the points that ma'am has mentioned and i'm sure by the time you pass out your bds or even mds your cv is going to be very very strong and you will have plethora of opportunities in front of you so thank you so much ma'am for coming on our uh, on our platform it has been pleasure talking to you and it's an honor for us to have you on our platform today and guiding us uh, you know the audience uh, in in this field of oral pathology and histopathology so thank you so very much ma'am thank you so much shireen and convey my regards to bipin also thank you so much for giving me opportunity to share my a journey of oral pathology and motivate my bds and mds students thank you so much <laughs> this has been really very inspiring session one of the best sessions so far at, at least to me for me and i hope the same for you all who are listening to our session today so thank you so much for attending our uh, our session and uh, patiently listening to our session if you uh, please subscribe to our channel uh, like and share this video because this might help out somebody who is planning to get into oral pathology as a career option also i will see you in the next video until then bye and good luck